In this video, I want to talk a little bit about IIS 775 and how to harden your SSL and TLS connections. So basically, what we're going to do here is disable any vulnerable protocols, ciphers, hashes, and key exchange algorithms. Basically, by default, a lot of the older technologies are left on, and that's what we're seeing is getting exploited nowadays on the web, like with the beast attack. So to mitigate these type of attacks, we just simply have to disable these items. So um, this should work on uh, Windows Server 2003, 2008, and 2012, as well as IIS 6, 7, 5, and 8. Um, now I haven't tried this on 6 and IIS 6 and 8, but um, I know on 03 and IIS 6 that there are a few gotchas with um, ordering of ciphers and stuff like that that you'll want to look into if you're using IIS 6. And um, I think the IIS crypto uh, utility does bark about that and gives you a warning as well. Now, there are a few ways that we can accomplish this. Uh, it can be done via the registry, or I'm going to use a little utility here that I'll show you in a minute called IIS Crypto. And it's a free utility, and um, IIS Crypto actually has templates for Beast, uh, FIPS 140-2, and uh, PCI compliance. So if you need to meet those standards, you could just click a button, and uh, it has all those settings already for you. And um, I'll put a link down below to this Microsoft KB article, but um, it basically explains the S-Channel DLL and um, the registry keys that we can use to uh, enable and disable the protocols ciphers and and all that stuff all right so let's go ahead and get started uh, from my demo here I'm just going to be using a uh, ESXi virtual machine and it's Windows Server 2008 R2 so let's go ahead and take a look at the registry real quick um, the key we're worried about here is H key local machine system current control set control security providers and S channel so this is where we would put the keys to enable or disable ciphers. And uh, you can use that KB article that I referenced on the previous slide to uh, show you all the options that are available here. Um, this isn't a bad way to uh, accomplish this. If Say if you were going to script it and you had to apply it to a bunch of machines, um, your settings or your template. But um, it's kind of a long way to do it. So um, we're actually going to use the IIS crypto utility and it's going to create all the register keys we want for us. All right. So next we want to check out Nortac.com, which is the developers of the IIS crypto utility, which again is free and um, it works on server 03, 08, 08R2, and 2012. And um, you see there's actually a few different versions here. There's um, two different GUI ones and a command line version, which would be nice if you're uh, going to script it and apply it out to the masses or something like that. And um, you do need the .NET framework to run these. So um, we're going to go ahead and use the GUI version here and I've already went and downloaded that so let's go ahead and try it out and you see it's a small standalone executable and you just double click the run no need to install and um, here you go so you see it shows all the options for the available protocols ciphers hashes key exchanges and SSL cipher suites as well as their order and then we also have the templates for default, PCI, FIPS, and BEAST. And uh, you can use any one of those. So you would just click on it and you see how it makes the selections that are appropriate for the BEAST template. Now you can go ahead and use your own settings here, but I would recommend doing so with caution. Um, certain things have to be used in combination or certain things like to be in certain orders. Like I think IIS 6 has an issue where it doesn't like the, the ciphers to be out of order and stuff like that. But we're just going to go ahead and hit apply and use our beast template. And you see that it says about the uh, cipher suite order has changed. And you want to make sure that it's correct. But like I said, we use a template, so we're just going to go ahead and hit OK. And, and then it says that we're going to need to reboot the computer to, uh, for all the settings to take. And that's it. So we're just going to go ahead and close out of that. And now let's go take a look at the registry real quick. And you see it doesn't look like our uh, changes took yet. That's, that must be why we have to do the reboot. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, restart the server. or restart. And put our comment in here. I'll just do SSL, TLS, hardening. And let's restart it. All right, so now that the server's back up and running, let's go ahead and take a look at the registry. Uh, so the key again is HQ local machine, system, current control set, control, security providers, S channel. And uh, we see right away under the ciphers that there's all kind of items that weren't there before. So the IIS crypto utility went ahead and created all the keys for us as well as setting the appropriate values. 
All right, so now that we've hardened our connections, it's time to go and test them out. And uh, the way that I do that is go to uh, ssllabs.com, and uh, it's a Qualys website, but they actually have an SSL uh, server test there. And um, provided that you have a valid SSL certificate and um, you use one of the templates, I think I use the uh, PCI one for mine, uh, you should get a relatively decent score. So I'm just going to go ahead and type in my domain name here, and you see that it gives me an A rating. And uh, like I said, I think my uh, setup for this is the PCI compliance template, along with a uh, positive SSL certificate, and uh, that's all it took. And then you see it gives you all kind of information about the server here and what it supports. Uh, it'll also flag anything that you need to check out or look into and maybe adjust. And um, that's really all there is to this. Um, hope that helps you guys out, and uh, thanks for watching.